What's up guys, Thomas here, welcome back to the channel. And today we have something special. We're taking a look at the new Emacs Baby Hawk 2 Analog. Let's take a look at the drone that's been reborn. So the sub 250 gram, three and a half inch category has been extremely popular. And today we have one more drone in that segment. This is the new Baby Hawk 2 Analog. And is it really new? Well, not really. In fact, this may have been the first three and a half inch drone on the market. In fact, other drones that came after this didn't really have a prop and actually used these same exact props for their drones. So this actually is the OG of the three and a half inch drone segment here. But at the time when Emacs made their drone, it wasn't all digital. Now digital is pretty awesome. A lot of the other manufacturers did make an analog version and unfortunately, Emacs did not have that, but that's about to change right now. Emacs made an analog version here, and there's some positive and negatives to having a analog version. Obviously the weight is gonna be reduced, and with the analog signal, you're gonna have lower latency in your video feed. Anyways, let's take a look at this box and open this up. Pretty good package in here. This thing is wrapped pretty good. You have your Baby Hawk 2, and usually there's an HD on the end here. That's about it. This one says, on the back here, Baby Hawk 2 analog plug and play. I did get the plug and play. So that means I will have to include a receiver in here and that's reinforced right here by this sticker. Let's open this up. I have my unboxing knife right here. Get this thing open, boom. That should be enough. All right. Do that to the side. And here is our box, matte black. All right, foam protector, take that to the side. And here's your drone, pretty nice actually. You have some stickers on top and a QC card here so you can scan and get some more information on this drone. Let's put that right here. And let's take a look at these props first. As we talk, these are the three and a half inch props. These things at one point were so hard to get. I actually had to source these out for my other drones actually. You have some more here. So you have just two spares. You have six total. And at least there's spares in there. I don't know if the original HD version had any spares. I don't think so. Uh, you have some screws here and some hardware, which is good. And here's your drone. Pretty nice. Let's put this to the side here. Close this up. Sweet. All right, let's take a look at this in greater detail if I can. All right, so pretty nice drone. This thing is light. I've flown a few of the three and a half inch drones in this segment and they're all different. This one here, I just said, started off this craze of three and a half inch drones, sub 250. So let's see why this is so good. First thing I see here is some nice carbon fiber, really, really thick bottom plate down here. That's probably four millimeters, but it is a, a one piece bottom plate and just the bracing on here, okay? So there's a lot of bracing on the bottom, which is good in case you do crash this thing. A lot of freestyle drones tend to end up in places that you want to be uh, or in situations that you don't want to be. So they reinforce that really well. Um, the, the Another thing here is just this layout of the propellers here. This is like a dead cat kind of version here. Um, you have like an X in the back, but the front is more straight, actually more recessed a little bit than a straight. And that's gonna help with reducing the prop in the view here. And this one, I know in the digital version, there was no props in view. Besides that, you have a strap here and it just looks different. I've seen a lot of these drones uh, in the three and a half inch segment. And this one just looks like a lot more space. Like there's a lot of air. Like just take a look at this. There's usually things all in here um, from the bottom plate touching the top here. I would assume this is identical to the HD version. As far as the frame is concerned, the layout, it's just that the components obviously is not digital. But there's some things here, since this was the founder, quote unquote founder of the three and a half inch drone um, segment, the other manufacturers have made some improvements. Um, just some things here looks a little different. For example, I haven't seen a drone in a while without protective coverings for the wires, uh, for the motors. Now we have some tape here that holds it down to the frame, the bottom plate, which is really good. Um, but most of the drones now have like a plastic piece that just covers the wires all together. 
the wires here don't seem to be as neatly, I guess, I guess the length of the wires isn't, not measured, but it could be a little bit neater. Besides that, yeah, it looks good. You have this XT30 plug here, which is in the front. Most of the drones have them in the back. That's not a bad thing, uh, but that's just different. Um, you have the Runcam Racer 5 camera on here. I've never used one of these before, so we'll see how this camera behaves. It is adjustable. And you have TPU here on the standoffs, which is what the camera is mounted to. Besides that, you have your motors here. This is one of the first drones in the three and a half inch segment. So these are 1404s, 3700 kV motors. Yeah, 3700 kV, which is pretty much the standard now for motors in this segment here. So that's pretty cool. You have a huge capacitor here that's right on the flight controller. And there is some kind of, uh, I guess, foam to dampen it, which is good. Uh, on the back here, you just have this, which is kind of surprising. You have this uh, linear whip antenna here. Usually, you'll find like a lollipop or a mushroom antenna on here. Even some of the competitors have maybe a circular polarized antenna on the back here, a more premium antenna. I don't know how this is gonna behave, but we'll see. Here's your VTX and that's mounted into some kind of TPU mount here. And you have a wire right here. As I said, I did get the plug and play version. So I have no receiver. I have yet to decide what I'm gonna put on this, but it's probably gonna be either Crossfire or Express LRS. You have your Emacs battery strap and it does have some silicone on the inside. So it's grippy and you have your mat already installed. So this thing is pretty nice guys. Really nice drone here. Now on the bottom here, which is pretty awesome, there's a lot of ventilation on this. Obviously, as I said it before, it's a lot of space. So this thing should be cooled very easily, very well. But on the bottom here, you can actually see the flight controller and they have this plastic here see-through, almost like a, I don't know, plexiglass kind of thing, but you can see through it straight here. And that's cool because a lot of times you're flying, you're in environments where there's sand or maybe grass. And even I recently had an issue where I crashed one of my drones and it, crashed into some plants and it shorted out the whole flight control of smoke everywhere. So with this, I doubt you're gonna have any of those issues. Pretty big flight controller guys, but it's the all in one obviously. Uh, one thing I also didn't notice uh, that the other drones have done, a lot of drones kind of piggyback off the original drone. Um, and as I said before, a lot of drones have made some improvements. Now they also don't have any legs or feet for this. So once you do land, it's gonna be right on the carbon fiber, although this is a pretty thick bottom plate. It would be cool to have some foam pads here, legs so that, or maybe TPU, where this thing here can just land and not scratch or damage the carbon fiber, but pretty cool guys, not bad at all. All right, so let's take a look at some of the specs here. Um, not much specs online, but it's similar to the HD anyways. Uh, the first thing talks about is the recommended battery. This is a 4S drone, so this requires a 4S battery, and they recommend an 850 milliamp hour battery, and that should be good enough to give this thing a couple minutes of flight time between five and six minutes. We'll see how that works. But yeah, uh, that's a pretty average battery size for this kind of drone, and this thing is super, I mean, this is one of the lightest drones I've seen, and it's evident based upon the components in here, very, very light. So uh, with that battery, you get obviously below a 250 gram drone, which is awesome. Now I also don't, what is, <laughs> yeah, this thing was made for a digital camera and I'm just looking at it here and they don't have any like a TPU camera mount on here. I was thinking about installing a digital or an action camera up here, but uh, maybe I can go online and find uh, a TPU mount I can mount on here. If worse comes to worse, I'll just slap on the GoPro on here, the small GoPro and see how that works. Um, that's interesting, it doesn't have that. Things have changed guys in a few months. All right, talking about the propeller size, this is the Emacs propellers, uh, three and a half inch propellers. These things are really awesome. This was introduced with this drone. At the time, people were wondering why would you need a three and a half inch prop? No one's gonna use this. Back in the days, it was just a three inch drone or a four inch drone or a five inch drone and there was really no need for this. Now these things are T-mounted on here and uh, I've used these before on other drones and they're really awesome. In fact, I've bought extra uh, propellers like these, the Emacs propellers for my other drones. So I do have some spares in case I do break this, but this just come with two extra spares, which is awesome. Now the antenna is, as I said before, is a linear dipole. As I said, it's a linear antenna 
And I was surprised it's on here. Some of the other manufacturers do uh, have like a circular polarized on here. Talking about this antenna right here, it's connected to a TBS Unified 32 Pro VTX and this thing puts out around 500 milliwatts. And that should be adequate. That's in the ballpark or average. Um, some drones put out 600, some put out 400. So 500 is a sweet spot. And if you're doing freestyle, you're not gonna get this thing too far. So we'll see how that works um, in a minute. It is controlled. It has uh, OSD here, so you can control that with your controller. Pretty awesome here. All right, talking about the visuals here, we have this Runcam Racer 5. I've never used this camera before, but it's pretty cool. We'll see how it works. This camera here is adjustable, and you do have some protection with the standoffs here, which is TPU. And the cool thing about this, once you install your props, then they will not be in view. All right, as far as the components up here, we have a Emacs all-in-one flight controller. This one has a uh, this one has a 25 amp ESCs. Uh, it does support OSD on here, so pretty cool. 25 amps, it's adequate. We have some drones with 35 and 40 amps, and then you also have some with 20. So again, another sweet spot for this uh, with these motors. That should be pretty adequate. Not bad at all. Talking about the motors, um, this uses a 4S battery. These are the 1404s, 3700 kV. So that's right in the range of other manufacturers. So this should perform very well with these motors. Nothing crazy there. And yeah, I think that's about it. This drone here is pretty cool. Nothing fancy, just all the space. So usually you have stacks. Sometimes you have a flight controller and an ESC or maybe a flight controller and a VTX. This one, it's just one board. And then this, this VTX looks like a receiver, the size of a receiver. Um, so yeah, guys, this thing should be a pretty cool drone. I'm really impressed with how light it is. So yeah, guys, what do you think about the Baby Hawk 2 analog? Is it something for you? I've received a lot of comments, a lot of emails about, hey, the Emacs Baby Hawk 2 is a pretty cool drone, but unfortunately it comes in digital. I can't afford digital. Um, you know, these DJI goggles, they're around six to $700. And these drones with the digital system are like 100 to 150 dollars more than the analog version. So, a lot of guys like flying analog, and I'm just happy that Emacs, you know, they got good reviews on their HD version. So this should be pretty well as, as well. Um, but yeah, guys, this one, this was the unboxing. Let me know what you think about this drone here. If you have any questions about it as well, leave them down below. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel because I'll be doing a setup and first flight of this drone. And while you're there, I have a bunch of FPV videos on the channel, so take a look and maybe you'll be impressed, guys. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.